Sports City, Sports City, Chef, Chef, Sports City, Sports City, Chef, Chef. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Welcome to another edition of Finger Foods. I am your host for today, the villain, Barry Jordan, w- repping the Sports City Chefs, sportscitychefs.com. If you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, get that algorithm going so you get more content that we push out weekly, daily, all over the place. Get to sportscitychefs.com, the interviews, the blogs, the website, the merchandise. We got a lot of things popping. So, Finally, finally, the Giants get a win uh, in week four in their contest against New Orleans Saints. New Orleans Saints opening up a stadium for the first time this year since uh, Hurricane Ida. Giants came to play on offense and defense, did what they had to do, make plays in the second half to win the game. Um, Listen, there's a lot to unpack, so let's get going. Saquon Barkley, unbelievable performance. His best performance, clearly, since he's been back uh, from the ACL tear. Uh, probably his best performance since uh, 2019 when he ran all over Washington for 276 yards of total offense. Um, on Sunday, he had five catches for 76 yards, um, and he had a rushing touchdown, and he had a receiving touchdown. He had a whole, oh, 126 yards of total offense. Um, listen, he didn't have a lot of room to run against that tough defensive line for the New Orleans Saints. Um, but he made plays. I think, you know, Jason Garrett made some adjustments, um, put him outside, and not as a decoy, but as a, a real threat because, you know, basically the corners were peeking into the, the backfield and, and not really paying him much attention. And, you know, he got loose, got free over the top, and caught a touchdown, a long touchdown pass from Danny Jones. So great job from Saquon Barkley. It was great to see. He's getting stronger. Uh, he ran hard, ran with purpose, especially in the fourth quarter and in overtime. Um, you just see the confidence building for him, and it was great to see. Uh, great to see Saquon Barkey put a, put together a really good game. Daniel Jones also had a pretty darn good game. I think uh, maybe it's time for the villain to ease up on him and, and, and say that he might be ready might be ready <laughs> to earn that Danny Dimes moniker. I'm not going to put it on him yet because that's a drink seal. Next week, he'll throw a snake bomb in it. I'll be so pissed. But um, listen, he put together also probably one of his better games as a pro. Um, you know, threw for over 400 yards, 402 yards, uh, completed 28 of 40, uh, 40 passes. Um, that's a good line. Um over 60% clearly, um, you know, had a, had two touchdowns. Um, he had one called back, should have been three, but one called back because of, um, because of basically it was, uh, dropped in the end zone by John Ross, uh, who made his first start. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, you know, he was just comfortable in the pocket you know, finding open receivers, going through his progressions. You know, he had a great pass to Kenny Galladay in overtime. Uh, had a nice pass him in the, late in the fourth quarter that Galladay broke. So we'll get to that too. A nice pass to Kyle Rudolph. Um, obviously, Saquon Barkley for the touchdown. Um, you know, he he threw an interception, but I mean, it was a garbage interception. His first of the year. Uh, a Hail Mary at the end of the half. So while it does count in the stat sheet, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I, I feel like he's taking care of the football all season. He kind of builds on the performances that he had in, in uh, Washington and has gotten better each week, I think, taking care of the football and, and, and moving the offense. So really, really happy for what we – this is what we saw rookie year, Daniel Jones, and, and I think he's progressed and I think he's getting better. Um, so hopefully he can continue that and, you know, build on that as we got a tough game coming up and it's time to give flowers to that offensive line. Um, they played a really good game. I think the best game they've played in a while. Um, I think last year towards the end of the season, when the giants started rolling, you, you could look at the offensive line and the defensive line for both uh, on both sides as a reason why the team started to put some wins together. Um, if they block, um, th- this offense is is pretty good. 
Um, they got weapons at all the skill positions that you can ask for, and Evan Ingram at tight end, Kyle Rudolph at tight end, Kenny Galladay, um, Saquon Barkley. So if they can block, there's no limit to what these guys can do. Um, Daniel Jones dropped back four times and wasn't sacked once. He had some pressure, but wasn't sacked. Um, listen, they were able to contain Cam Jordan, who, who not related, <laughs> by the way, is one of the better defensive linemen in the league. Andrew Thomas, in his second year, um, was pretty much matched up against them the whole game and didn't allow a sack. I mean, a stat from Pro Football Focus says that Thomas hasn't allowed a sack in 134 possible uh, passing dropbacks. Um, listen, that, that's, that's pretty darn good this year. I mean, when, like I've said in the past, and I've said it on my blog, when you don't talk about an offensive lineman by name, then they must be doing something right. And, um, you know, he's played pretty well this year and we got to, you know, maybe start giving him a little bit more credit, having an off season, having a training camp definitely helped. Um, you can see he's, he's progressing and getting more comfortable in that offense. And, you know, to be honest, I want to point it out because it's not like the Giants were uh, doing a dink and dunk type of offense, you know, quick throws, getting out of his hand, what have you, kind of like what the Steelers were doing last year and then the Giants were forced to do most of last year because they just had no offensive line. They were, you know, it was almost 10 yards per ta pass attempt. I think it was 9.9 .9 yards per ta pass attempt uh, against the state. So they had to hold up for a while. And, and they did. They played really well. Um, it was a makeshift line outside of, um, you know, outside of Thomas and Soldier. So um, give those guys credit. They played a phenomenal game. The defense, um, you know, listen, the defense played pretty well. I think uh, for the most part, they got stops when they had to. Um, you know, I think that was the big thing. I mean, there was a lot, a lot left to be desired on the run defense. They you know, Kamara went for over 120 yards. Um, Taysom Hill ran for two touchdowns. One run was just, look, he looked like uh, like Walter Payton back in the day. Um, you know, the, the tackling was not very good for the Giants. And, you know, that's where you miss your leading tackler, uh, Blake, Griff, Blake Martinez, who went, went down with the ACL tear. Um, <clears throat> Jabil Peppers got hurt late in the game. So another tackler that is out there just wasn't there for them right so um and they did in and, and it's another game no pass rush um it 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 starts to to add up when you can't get pressure from your front four when you have to send linebackers send safeties you leaving that back end exposed um you know aziz ojari the first game that he didn't have a, a sack in his young career um he only played four games but um i don't i don't remember uh, Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill in about 26 pass attempts getting hit. Um, they, they didn't, they didn't get a hit on them at all. Um, so the pass rush is not there. I don't know what they're going to do to fix it. I mean, you, you, it's too late now. You're not going to find pass rushers off the scrap heap. You might be able to make a trade, but who gives up valuable pieces like that? Right. So the giants are, are going to need to figure out some creative ways, um, Patrick Graham and company to really get pressure on the quarterback. You know, Bradbury got burned uh, again on a long completion, a 52-yarder, uh, first play of the second half, but then rebounded on that on the drive uh, with a big interception to stop the drive. Um, you know, that was the MO of the defense. They bent a lot, um, you know, in the first quarter, um, fourth and three in, inside the giant territory. Uh, they get a stop. Uh, and 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 turn the ball over on down. So um, the defense made a you know enough plays, got the got the defense off the field, gave the ball back to Daniel Jones. Where a, a lot of times, um, you know, like late in the fourth quarter, I think there was about five minutes left, and it was a third down, and and that's typically where they you know give up the first down. You know, more time ticks off the clock. You know, that five minutes goes to about. You know, three and a half to, to two minutes when the Giants offense can get back on the field. Giants were able to get back on the field because of the turnover on downs, um, you know, forced to punt and then, you know, subsequently go for a game winning or game tying drive. So, um, listen, they made enough plays and, and they did what they had to do. Right. Um, but the defense, there is some work to be done and, you know, it's not going to get any easier. Uh, offensively, 
Jason Garrett played called a phenomenal game. Uh, Got to give him credit. Um, listen, he basically was in control, especially in the second half. He he and and Dan, Daniel Jones got it in a nice groove, uh, play calling. Um, listen, outside of that, you know, that that first half where they had ball in the red zone again, and I'll get to it. Um, but you know, outside of that. He called a really good game, a, a solid game, mixing and matching, getting guys the ball. I thought, you know, Kenny Galladay um, had his best day out as a giant, obviously six catches for 116 yards, but two big catches in the game. He caught a 28-yard catch and run under a minute left uh, in the for- fourth quarter to set up the game-tying field goal, um, you know, broke a couple tackles. Um, and streaked down to get them into field goal range. And then in overtime, had a 23-yard catch um, to set, set up Saquon Barkley's game-winning touchdown run. So, um, you know, Galladay came up big, especially with the injuries to uh, Sterling Shepard and, and Darius Slayton. Um, you know, and I thought, you know, they would be able to lock up Kenny Galladay, but they chose to single cover him and, and really just not not really take him away from the game plan. So I thought that was a, a bad move by the Saints defense. Um, Kadarius Tony, welcome to the pros. Uh, had a really good day, six catches for 78 yards. I mean, you could see that they really wanted to get him the football. Um, they, they, you know, Joe Judge said that they wanted to get him involved on the offense, uh, got his hand, ball in the hand, the ball in his hands. Really, you know, the big third and, and 18 conversion uh, was huge, you know, darting down, uh, down the sideline, getting in, getting in, 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 in and out of the, the tacklers and really finding the, the yardsticks, you know, kept the drive going, swung the momentum back to the Giants. He, you know, he was quick, elusive, uh, you know, and, and, and he had that game breaking speed that really, you know, you saw at Florida. Uh, in college, so you know, really great to see him have a great game, and it was nice to see John Ross too have a good game. Made a nice catch, uh, 50, 52 year, yard touchdown. Uh, it wasn't a touchdown; it was a catch, fumbled at the goal line, but then um, alertly covered the football in the end zone and, and scored the touchdown. So, you know, it was good to see the receivers step up. Uh, Evan Ingram had a, a decent game catching the ball, no turnovers, so. Um, but again, you know, the Giants could have easily lost this game, as I kind of noted yesterday on CV Sports podcast last night. Uh, great shout out to those guys. Uh, they do a great job over there. Um, listen, we had our mistakes. It wasn't penalties. It was, you know, play calling and missed field goals. I think at a, at a point, um, Joe Judge has to understand when to go for it on fourth down. You know, the, the numbers tell you fourth and eight or whatever, fourth down inside their territory, just go for it. You, it's too long to kick a field goal. You're not going to get much field position <clears throat> on the averages. You know, go for it there. Um, he didn't go for it. He kicked it. I think they got the ball at the 17-yard line. It was a net about only 30 yards, they, and they were able to move right back down the field. Um, Peyton went for it on fourth and three. They didn't get it, but, you know, they, he played the law of averages to go for it, right? So not a lot of fourth and three, uh, eight plays in the playbook, but, I mean, you got to go for it. You got to just go for it. Um, Graham Gano missed his first field goal in um, 38 attempts. Um, so that that's points that were, should have been put on the board that we missed. And then you're talking about another drive deep in, in, in into the red zone, and Jason Garrett killed the drive with a jet sweep to Evan Ingram. Um, it's just, you know, outside of that play, you know, Garrett had a good game, but outside of that, that was a terrible call. Um, Giants only scoring touchdowns 33% of the time when they're in the red zone. That's unacceptable. They have to convert these touchdowns, these points into touchdowns. You can't chase, um, these, these high powered offenses with field goals and ain't going to work. Um, you know, they did it last week. Instead of having two touchdowns against the Falcons, they had two field goals. The Falcons subsequently scored a touchdown. You're Now you're automatically down. So it's deflating for the team. So um, it's something they need to clean up. They need to shore up. But in, at the end, listen, it's another win. Um, our first one of the season. It, it's easy to say that they could easily be uh, – they can easily be 3-1. and one. 
a couple bounces of the ball or snaps of the ball, uh, what have you. But we're we're one in three right now, going into a big game in Dallas in Big D in Jerry's world, uh, welcoming uh, Dak Prescott in that offense. Uh, you know that's that's going to be a tall task for this defense. I don't know if they're up for it. They got to figure out ways to get pressure and get after Dak Prescott, get him off the spot. They have to tackle if they let uh, Dak and, and and Zeke and and Pollard run wild on them. If Dak scrambling or Elliott and Pollard are running, it's going to be a long day for this defense. I think the Giants can score with him. Um, I think they've proven that they can score some points. Um, you know they're going to have to to keep pace with these guys. So. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, so I'm I'm happy we got the win, and it's on to on to week five, on to Dallas. So thanks for listening. Um, like I said, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share, comment, what have you, um, so that you don't miss any of our our great content. We got more content coming soon. Um, you know, we got the, the NFL free for all. We got the callers cookout. We got the baseball buffet. That's going to be postseason uh, minded. Uh, the call, the crossover cafe will be back soon. Um, so check out that. But as I say, um, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend. It's the chefs again. And you don't know. Now, you know, thanks for listening. Sports city, sports city, chef, chef, sports city, sports city, chef, chef. Ha <laughs> ha.